Go. Back and hello everyone. I am your host Nimsh, and I'm joined here by my co-host Monk. We're watching HTC Invitational, the round of 16. We already had four matches. We are having four more. The players are playing for a five thousand dollars prize pool in a best of five conquest format. And the next match is going to be the very best match everybody was waiting for. Who are we going to see, Monk? Yeah, it's going to be pretty much the titans of the Hearthstone sea scene in the last few months. It's going to be Cloud9, it's Kalento versus Team Archon's Firebat. Pretty much the most successful players in the last two months. Firebat winning two tournaments in both Gfinity tournaments that have happened. And Kalento winning CN versus EU Masters number two. He won Gamers uh, Assembly in France. He won the Archon Team uh, Brawl. And then most recently, he won the Kingwin Pro League, in which a league that I would consider like that's probably the second most prestigious title yet, just short of BlizzCon. Those guys are just incredible. It's like a lot of people say, "Hey, there is randomness in Hearthstone," and uh, there there is some randomness, obviously, because you are drawing cards. But those guys consistently prove that you can be the very best in the game and just continue winning those events uh, where some people just you know continue losing in a they get to top eight they get to top four but then they never win because colento and firebot are taking those wins right yeah exactly and what i really like about these two players is that even though they're both at the top of the scene they've done so in very different ways they've taken very different approaches to the game firebat is more known for kind of being I really prepared for tournaments researching yeah. like win rates of decks figuring out what decks to bring what tech cards to bring um but kalento is more of like the guy who just never misplays always figures out the best play and it's they've done like they've won tournaments in different ways perhaps sometimes kalento doesn't bring the best decks sometimes firebat misplays um a bit more than maybe kalento for, uh, per se but both players have won tournaments in their own way and it's just going to be a clash of styles here all right, and the game one is ready. Colento versus Firebat. The winner advances, the loser is eliminated from this tournament. Paladin versus Druid. Already, wait, those are the underdog classes. Whoa, what? holy light. What is this? Is this I mean, Dragon Paladin? This is exactly what I'm talking about. Firebat, he just brings cards that no one else would think to bring. Holy Light being probably like one of the best examples that I could give. Yeah, he always has something new in his decks, right? Like he was bringing a Brewmasters. Um, I, I can't really think about stuff, but like always in every deck that Firebat is bringing, there is something different. Like he always changes yeah. like one or two cards. Well, like the last Paladin deck I've seen him run, which was in the beginning of GVG, he actually ran Death Lords and he ran uh, Humility and Kodos. No muster for battle, no quartermaster. And it might be even possible that he's doing the same in this tournament. I mean, oh. if you run Holy Light, I might you might as well run like those other strange cards that no one sees, like Death Lord and Paladin, for example. Yeah, that's certainly true. All right, but here we have this, pal this Paladin with one Holy Light. Other than that, it seems a standard versus a standard Druid from Colento, as far as we can see now. Colento hitting that Wild Growth is really important. Uh, oh, a minion that can be easily killed. It's good for Fire Bats. Who do you think is an edge in this matchup? Is, it, is Paladin good versus Druid? Or is it 50-50? Or is um, Paladin actually favored? Well, before Black Rock Mountain came out, I think the consensus was that Paladin was favored in this matchup, either slightly above 50% or way above 50%. But after um, Blackrock Mountain came out with the event, uh, advent of Emperor Thorazane, a lot of players have started to say, actually, you know what? Um, it's actually more a 50-50 because even though you can put Emperor in both decks, it seems to help the Druid a bit more because it reduces the cost of their combo cards, for instance. While, yeah. Whereas Paladin, they don't have like a finishing combo. All right. Also, I like that Paladin can uh, take two approaches to this matchup. Like it can, uh, Paladin can be really aggressive, trying to. Depends on the hand, obviously. But uh, Paladin can start with turn one coin juggler, maybe shielded mini bots, and um, use uh, weapons to to clear and then get um, face damage with um, Master for Battle and Quartermaster. Or Paladin can be more laid back, just uh, taking his time and uh, waiting for a good clear with the quality. But uh, True Silver Champion, obviously, one of the key cards. 
uh, helping to clear those those big tons, big minions. Uh, far by getting both of the silvers, using them uh, to good effect. Guardian of Kings, another unexpected card from Farbat. Yeah, this is, this is just going to be a Heliodin. Um, probably like really teched against hunters, I would say. Like hunters have become like they're the they're like one of the most popular decks, definitely top three at the moment. Mm. So probably a good choice to bring Paladin with a lot of heals to this tournament. Like even though Kalento got a walled growth, um, and he's been curving out really well, I feel like. Firebat, he actually has like the four best cards in this matchup, which are the two True Silver Champions and the two Aldor Peacekeepers. So he's actually going to be able to deal fairly well with this type of board. Yeah, like from, from my end right now, looking at the board, I think Firebat has a great advantage. Colento having only Wrath and Savage Roar, and Firebat having all the means to answer this board and to extend the board a presence as well with that Juggler and Aldors in the future. So whatever Colento is going to, to, to bring... Um, you need something like Dr. Boom, because, or like Ancient, um, Ancient of Lore. But even if he plays Ancient of Lore, it's going to be, uh, get attack reduced, and a Farbat can start taking advantage from there. Okay. There were kind of two lines of play here, either the Aldor or the True Silver Champion. I guess uh, this option, it develops the True Silver, so you can use it on anything in the next turn. And you can save your Aldors for even the bigger creatures. For example, uh, if uh, perhaps uh, perhaps like a Doctor Boom came out in the next turn, or an Ancient of Lore, for instance. Oh, there is Ancient of Lore, but um, one turn too late. So now, what kind of uh, line of play Colento has to take with Double Savage? That gives him a lot of damage potential. Is there any merit in using Savage now to deal? Additional uh, four points of damage. Um, I don't. I don't think so. It's you probably can get a lot more value off of Savage Roar later on in the game. All right. It's a good draw. So what we are going to see from Pilot Shredder doesn't matter that much, but it's always better to get something good. Oh, so one four. Okay. I mean, it is very sticky. So it might get a lot of value off Savage Roar. That's yeah. probably like the, the biggest benefit, I would say. It's a, it's a decent minion. It's actually really like because it has a nice effect that that it heals um, Druid. It's not that that much different from let's say Millhouse Mana Storm right now because Millhouse would still get um, Aldor Peacekeeper. Yeah, but it, Millhouse would at least bait the Aldor, so you wouldn't have to like use it for. Oh wow. Like you, Look you, at right now, you have the Aldor for both Emperor and Ancient of Lord right now, for instance. Look at the Torison. Reducing the cost of double Savage Roar. So do you play um, Ancient of Lord to draw cards? I guess you do. And uh, because the board from Paladin is not that threatening yet. And Paladin doesn't really have uh, much burst. You've already seen double True Silver, so you're going for the longer game, especially with that Torison. Those uh, Sludge Belcher and Zombie Chow are not great for Torison. Colento for sure would love to get like a Force of Nature to get the cost reduced, or maybe a second Ancient of Lore. Uh, Sludge Belcher is alright, but the Zombie Chow is just uh Yeah, like you can even consider not playing the Zombie Chow because it just heals your opponent for so much more. Unless. Farbat actually leaves Zombie Chow on board. Not playing around double Savage Roar. How much damage is double Savage Roar of all, all those minions survive? Savage Roar is plus 8, so it's 16 plus 4, that's 20 points of damage. But he, he just has to clear. Like, there is no point in taking risks and not clearing this. He even hits the 1-4. I mean 1-5, yeah. which makes it that easy target for Shredder. So basically, everything dies except for the Zombie Chow. Yep. And then I guess you actually heal up here. Just to double... fit in the heal in, right? Yeah. Well, there is no reason not to heal, I believe. It's not like healing up is, is putting you in a, in a worse position. It's only improving your state. There is a Dr. Boom, which is nice. But then Colento has to evaluate how much damage is there incoming as well. A swipe would be nice. Swipe would be actually great. 
just attack the 4-2 with the zombie chow and then swipe the free free. Hopefully get something with one health. Wow, swipe would actually change a lot here. There is no swipe yet. Yeah, I think Klunkta is plenty happy with Dr. Boom though. You're almost never yeah. unhappy with, with a Dr. Boom play. Okay. What do you think about attacking Pilot to Shredder um, after playing Boom? I think it's okay because uh, maybe he was afraid that the Pilot Shredder and the Aldera Peacekeeper would be able to trade too well into the um, Dr. Boom, for instance. Also, he might, he might have been afraid of Mana Wraith and then like um, not being able to shape shift and play Dr. Boom would be devastating. Yeah, exactly. Mana Wraith or uh, Rubin Webblood, for instance. And Doomsayer was actually good for him, because Doomsayer clears the board and the bombs hit somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. You when you're playing like a minion um, after or before Pilot Shredder, you always have to, you always have to take into account um, those three cards: Doomsayer, um, Mana Wraith, and Ruby and Weblord. You also kind of have to keep into account like Explosive Sheep and um, Unstable Goal. I think those are like the main five cards you want to keep track of. So here, Colento is thinking about Savage Roar. Uh, Savage Roar being plus six points of damage for free mana seems really good. And uh, Firebat is out of cards. And he has two cards in his hand. That's not great. Two damage killing that Alder is great for Colento. And killing the another minion. Wow, those bombs definitely did the work. Firebat yeah, a bit just... concerned about the situation. Yeah, it just seems like uh, Firebat's just run out of cards. He has like great answers, but... He just doesn't have like the cars that he needs to win the game. This yeah. Emperor is going to reduce the Savage Roar for, uh, for once. and Yes, it, it, I guess Firebat can just Guardian of Kings here, but that doesn't really deal with the Emperor. He, can also... he has to kill the Emperor. You cannot yeah, he... leave Emperor on board at this situation. Like you do, you're, you're forced to Consecrate. Well, Firebat seems um, thinks that he doesn't have to. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like this a little better because if you concentrate now, you're still going to uh, have a board disadvantage in the next following turn. And you know what? Guardian King is actually really good against Druid. Like back in the day, like a year ago, I played, I, I was playing Druid and I was uh, hitting the ladder and I ran to this Paladin that had double Guardian of Kings, double Boulder Fist Ogre. And it was just impossible for Druid to deal with just like such high health minions. That traded so well with my lures, with my Druze of the Claw. Yeah, it is really, uh, really powerful. Do you think he's going to swipe here and uh, use his Thorison? I think like you go face with the Thorison. Oh, he's going to trade. Okay. Well, it's not like Thorison is going to do much. Oh, he gets equality. But then... Um... There is only one card in Druid's hand, so using Equality Consecration here. But then again, you don't, you are not taking that much damage, so you can wait till there is more on board. I think Kalento will actually not I'll just hold on to the uh, Sylvanas. Yeah, and he, he can probably he probably shape. knows like what cards are in uh, Firebat's hand right now. Some kind of Equality clear. clear. True. Pyromancer Consecration without equality. Is Story Sun bad here? <clears throat> it is still a minion. This is a very interesting board because, like, you know, Colenso will not overextend to this, but you still are kind of forced to clear the board at some point because those minions are going to kill you in the curse of a couple of turns. Colento just sipping a drink. Chilling. Maybe that's his uh, secret to winning Hearthstone tournaments. Might you be. To, you have to get that exact cocktail. You could ask him, what brew is that? Oh man, Consecration for free mana. Far about drinking as well. So it only shows how uh, important drinking beverages is during games. Like, you have to stay hydrated. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm enjoying a nice drink right now, actually. Alright, I'm going to take a sip as well. You can, uh, you can even turn this into a drinking game. Of course, uh, HCC does not endorse overconsumption of alcohol, of course. 
Oh, we never mentioned that. You can drink orange juice. Every time Farbat creates a dude, you have to sip an orange juice. <laughs> Alright, so what do you do here? Uh, again, like, as Kalento here, like, you're not afraid of this Emperor. It just doesn't do that much, but... Yeah, I guess you can just, like, clear it just because. And this actually has turned into a game of, like, just top decks. Who can top deck the best? Well, right now it looks good for Kalento with Sylvanas on board and uh, Keeper. So even if there's a Tyrion, look at that! Uh. That's a Tyrion! And he can actually steal it. Wait, can he steal it? Yeah, he can steal it. Just the silence. He might just have to go for the 50-50. Like, from his perspective, he doesn't know that Kalento is a keeper. Yeah. But he might just have to risk it here, to be honest. Like, keeper would um, let you Kalento the, steal the, the Tyrion. Exactly. Keeper the 1-1, one, one, steal the Tyrion. Like, it's keeper, wrath, and swipe that let Kalento uh, have a guaranteed chance to steal this Tyrion. So what you can do is you can actually... Can you wait and not play Tyrion here? And just... Um... Not really. I don't I don't think like normally if this dude could attack, I think you have to go for Tyrion. There's no way you can kill the Sylvanas easily. You've used uh one equality, one pyromancer already. Yeah. So there, there is think, a break. Uh, oh man, this is gonna Firebat's gonna get wrecked so hard. I wouldn't be surprised if Firebat just leaves the game right now. Yeah. He kind of stuff. He kind of has like the MO of a guy who uh like in tournaments before, where he's queued up Freeze Mage against Control Warrior, he's just left the game immediately. And I think at this point, there's very little chances for him. Equality into Harrison Jones. Wait, is it it? This is 12, 16, 18? No, not yet. But still, Kalento is in such a great position that steering that Tyrion. Okay, he's just going to continue killing the dudes. Alright, no, Monk, can you remind me? Because we do have a giveaway for our viewers. What do you do to enter the giveaway? If I want to uh, win a phone, you know, tablets or some jerseys. In the meantime, well, there's quality consecration, but... Yeah, it, it is like an answer, but is it enough to get uh, Firebat into this game? Uh, from what we can tell, no, because with the Ashbringer and with the Force of Major, it is game over. All right, so tell me about the giveaway. What do you have to do well, to enter the giveaway? Well, all you have to do, it's its very simple, really, Nimsh. Like, even I can figure it out. All you have to do is you have to tweet at uh, HCC Esports using the hashtag HCC Esports. And you just, if you enter that giveaway, you have a chance to either win one of 12 shirts, team shirts from TSM, Cloud9, or Team Liquid. You have a chance to win one of two HCC tablets and a chance to win one of uh, HCC's very new phones. Of course, it's probably going to be the HCC One M9, the newest phone that came out from HCC, which is uh, probably like one of the best phones on the market right now because it just came out a month ago. Oh, wow. That sounds really great. But you know what? Colento won. So Colento is 1-0 versus Farbats. And uh, we didn't talk about the, the matches, by the way. Like We mentioned that uh, Farbat is bringing underdog bags. And exact decks the dog brought. Uh, Colento mixing up a bit, uh, resigning from Hunter, bringing the Druid, and the Druid won, which is important. Like we've seen Nyria losing with his Druid three times today in the first match. But now Colento secured the Druid win, and he's left with a very strong Warlock, a very strong Warrior deck. Can Firebat win this still? Yeah, uh, again, um, in this series, I'm actually probably cheering for Firebat here just because he brought like the more interesting deck, the Paladin deck. I doubt Kalento will be bringing anything similar to that because almost certainly Kalento will be bringing Patron Warrior and uh, he'll probably be bringing either Handlock or Zoo, depending on, I guess, what he's feeling that day. All right. By the way, another interesting card, Pilot of the Sky Golem for Farbats. Solemn, Solemn Vigil. Vigil. Oh my god. Okay, I'm actually... Surprised and amazed at the same time. Um, this Paladin, Firebats Paladin, has a lot in store. I want to see more of it. And we are able to see more of it because it lost. But maybe it will win now. And for Colento, that's a green patron. A uh, very good opening with double weapon. Frauding as well. But there is, uh, for Firebat, can you evaluate Firebat's hand? Is it good? I guess the, the main issue with this hand is 
there's not much pressure early on. Like, I would definitely want to see, like, uh, a, sh uh, what's it called? The shielded mini bot in the early game, for instance. But you know what? He does have the Tree Silver Champion, which is probably one of the best cards that you can get early game. Um, and eventually, he will get the Pilot Sky Golem, which is a really good card against Warrior. Double True Silver again. It didn't help him last game, but maybe this game it will make a difference. I mean, it certainly helped him last game in the sense that, like, he died earlier, or he he died later than he could have. Um, <laughs> yeah, it helped he died him stay earlier. In the game. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of, yeah, he does damage to himself, attacking minions. He should go for face. Okay, so uh, here Colento is just going to advance with, uh, with a board. Um, Firebat might coin the true silver. Not really necessary, is it? My, I like Master for Battle. Master for Battle is right. It's like. Whirlwind is not really doing much if Whirlwind is being used here. Well, there is a fro there is a frauding, so actually a frauding Whirlwind will be amazing. Yeah, and this is like kind of the exact situation that we saw in the previous Green Patron Warrior versus um, versus Paladin game where uh, uh, Dog's opponent Strife Crow he got a, a huge frauding Berserker behind a taunt, and Paladin just had no way to deal with it. Clento goes for like the more uh, ground, or more like safe play though, and he just goes for uh, just attacking his opponent in the face. Wow, he's not playing uh, around Quartermaster. And maybe he figure out like there is n no Quartermaster in this list because he's seen so many unusual cards like Holy Light and Guardian. Exactly. I think that's a very great call to make actually. And uh, so, going for Frothing Whirlwind you can, was... Wait, actually, hold on a second. I think you can actually just Solemn Vigil this turn. Wow. And there we have it, guys. That is the first time in competitive Hearthstone that card has ever been used. For one mana, draw two cards. No reaction from Kalento. He's like, yes, I actually expected you to have that card. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but Colento is really calm, um, analyzing the game in his head and, you know, trying to figure out what will be the best way to win here. Um, on this turn, I do like frauding here. Uh, not frauding, uh, just um, Despite. Going for face with Despite. Yeah, it sets up uh, Grim Patron, so yeah, kind of like yeah. it, and Colento does like it too. Despite is so powerful. I wonder if there's Harrison Jones in the Firebats deck. I think more people should actually bring Harrison Jones to kind of those tournaments. And we've yeah, seen ha a bit of Harrison Jones already. Exactly. Harrison Jones and Ooze are both just very popular in tournaments. Like, we even see Ooze from, uh, in Handlocks, for example, just getting rid of those Death Spites. Because I think getting rid of Death Spites against the uh, Patron Warrior is probably, like, the most devastating weapon to lose for any deck, basically. Because, it, it like, the... The four damage is actually valuable, but what's more valuable is that it lets you set up for huge Grim Patron turns later on to the game. Absolutely. Um, just getting rid of the Despite is so key. Uh, so here we are going to see a big Grim Patron turn. Is there a good way to, to deal with that? There's um, no Consecration. No, there is Consecration, actually. You, you need, basically, you need either Wild Pyral Equality or... Consecration uh, equality, and unfortunately for Bi Firebat, he has neither of, the, neither of those. And this so is exactly exactly why Paladin struggles so much in this matchup. You need those two cards to actually clear. Well, actually, wait. Hmm. Yeah, like even Pyro Consecration doesn't cut it because those are, those are like two packets of damage. So you are still creating dwarves, still calling on the dwarves. No worse than Commander, but still an amazing turn for Frucolento. Yeah, what Firebat is trying to do here is he's trying to set up um, the True Silver in order to clear this 3 3 and then Consecration in the very next turn. Yeah. Well, basically, like, there should be, a, a, at the end of the day, there should be one uh, healthy dwarf, a healthy 3 3, and a, a couple of damaged ones that you can deal with Consecration. 
Kanto sees through that play though, and he's gonna summon like an even more unkillable board. This is tough, gaining a lot of health as well. Yeah, basically, whenever you have two healthy Grim Page and Warriors that the True Silver isn't able to deal with, then you probably got the game locked up. All right, so equality. This is not equality. So is there anything that Firebot can do here? Belcher is just going to die to the Death Spite. One of the minions is going to kill the Sludge token. Healing yourself up to 18. There is potentially 6, 12, plus 5, 17 points of damage. So what do we attack now? Alright. A stable ghoul is um, interesting. I a Warsong Commander will be lethal. Yeah. <laughs> Warsong Commander plus almost anything would be lethal at this point. I think you stick with the plan. You go for face. Um, you've seen your opponent. He has uh, Guardian of Kings and Holy Light, but... That's all the heals that you've seen from your opponent, so I would have to venture a guess to say, like, probably not many heals in the following turns, and even if he lay on hands on turn 8, that means he's not developing the board. So that means he's probably losing the game. If Colento goes for face here for 14 points of damage and plays something, like even without playing, Farbat gets, let's say, equality, can Farbat still stabilize on 3 points of health? Stabilizing on three points of health. You know, that, that actually just means like whenever Kanto is just drawn to his Warsong Commander, or if he draws into Grom, if he draws into Dr. Boom against like a lot of Boom bots, then pretty much Firebat is dead. But what's more important at this very moment is that Firebat, he actually just needs to draw an equality. It's, it's do or die at this point. All right, so is it equality? That's not equality. Jagger is not going to help him. So not really a way to clear this. He is going to play Sludge Belcher. Oh yeah, yeah. He actually he can like just clear the whole board. Here oh, he can the, actually. You're with right. The consecration. Yeah. So consecration, but then the issue is after you consecrate, what can you do to follow up? And the answer is only going to be the piloted shredder. So anything that has charge, or anything that's a weapon, will be lethal. So yeah, but on the other hand, if he, he stabilized, right? If he gets um, like a heal now. A lay on hands or another guardian, maybe he will be able to escape the range of Colento. I wouldn't really put it past Colento to run, or rather, put it past Firebat to run two Guardian of Kings, for example. So one guardian, one lay on hands, double true silver. Wait, no lay on hands, like Holy Light. And he has to play. Uh... Oh, yeah, there oh, it look. is. Second, Second guardian. Second Guardian of Kings. Can he, he actually, might actually do it? Escape. He might actually stabilize on two points of health and still win this game. Because Colento's out of juice. Like, he, he doesn't have any draw. He doesn't have any charge for now, at least. Oh, no. Oh, explosive sheep is... <laughs> it's not what you wanted. <laughs> oh, my Fire God. Is like, oh, God. <gasps> Please. <laughs> Probably, like, the worst minion possible for Firebat at this point, to be honest. Yeah, and now just a simple, unstable goal is going to to counter that board. Pretty sick. The question only is, do you, what, do you, what do you play? Do you play like everything? Just you play unstable goal, loot horror, double frauding? Um, maybe because Kalento decided to save his frauding berserkers the previous turn, maybe he decides to do so on this turn as well, because judging from Kalento's line of play, it seems like he's saving those frothings for a huge combo turn. Yeah, but he definitely has to play that loot hoarder to cycle it for a card. Um, if he gets um, a war song and he will have two draws to do, to do so, he might be in a good position. But there is a sludge, sludge belcher to stop one of those frothings. So not being able to snipe the sheep this turn might... It's definitely costing Kalento a lot of health. But then again, he is at 40. And I heard that uh, it's hard for Green Patron to, to gain armor. Somebody lied to me. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Kalento tops next. 
battle rage. It's not like, great. He needs the Taskmaster to snipe that sheep. Cruel Taskmaster doing so much damage here. Armorsmith, not really. So he can still play the Armorsmith, though. Yeah, this looks like to be the turn where he has to activate the sheep. But you know what? Unfortunately, Firebat, he has the... He has Kel'Thuzad, which means he'll yeah. be able to revive all his minions. And you can actually make it so that the sheep doesn't revive. Okay, so Farbat, can you figure out the way for the sheep not to die? Well, I mean, to revive last. Can you actually do it, Monk? Because whatever you do, like, the sheep is going to die to the one so free. And the first maybe, minion is being resurrected so maybe first. Maybe you take out the unstable ghoul with your 1-1 one, one and your sludge belcher. But then sheep dies and is going to be resurrected. But anyway. then you've... Yeah, I guess the the issue is that there's not enough minions that are under t are too many minions that are under two health. But are, do you really care that much about the sheep getting resurrected here? Like you're you're getting all the minions you wanted anyway. That's true. All right, so a pretty sick play around the sheep, and the sheep is back. There is wait. No, no. Oh man, Th there's so still a sludge belcher blocking the way. Yeah. Okay. He actually stabilized, and uh, can Colenta win without the brawl and you know without cards? This is amazing. This is this is this is what I expected, kind of like this is what I hoped for. This kind of match, Colento Farbat, where we see this weird paladin that's actually somehow good versus Green Patron. All right, maybe good as a stretch, but this game is actually crazy. <laughs> yeah, pretty insane at this point. And is that lethal on board? That's eleven, twelve. Yeah, that's definitely enough, especially with the Consecration. I believe that's actually, it looks like exactly lethal on board. All right, so Firebot is going to take game number two. Amazing comeback from two points of health on the back of Double Guardian, Holy Light. Explosive Sheep not even stopping Firebot from from winning. Uh, a tie versus Glento, he just has to take a break, you know, just... He is not even smiling sheepishly, he is just uh, sighing with relief at this point. Yeah, definitely a very well-fought and hard-fought game from Firebat. We saw that he was definitely down in the dumps right after like these two huge Grim Patron turns. But you know what, he's played it really slow, he's able to deal with the Grim Patrons uh, one by one, and eventually he was able to clear all of them off, uh, hide behind a bunch of taunts, get a bunch of heals up, and just a really epic game there. Uh, Firebat claw cl uh, clawing from the jaws of defeat, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know what? I analyzed the game uh, yet again, and I think he won because he casted um, Solemn Vigil to draw those two cards, which enable him to top deck that Guardian of the Kings, the clutch moment. Yeah, that is true. I mean,. Solemn Vigil, we, like, it's hard to, uh, it, it's hard to, like, talk about it, because, like, it's a card that, like, no one's ever used, but somehow Firebat is the player who's pretty much made it back into the game, who's the first player to bring it, and I, I wouldn't really expect anyone else, to be honest, because he is, like, the master of deck building. Alright, so game number three is going to start Rogue versus Green Patron Warrior. Do you think it's a, a new breed of, of rogue, or is it like a, the same old, same old, good stuff? The oil rogue, violet teachers. Yeah, I, I would probably say this is a very standard oil rogue. Firebat is kind of like one of the only players remaining who still likes to favor rogue in this meta game. But you know what? Good for him. It's like an old test and uh, very tested and true deck, I would say. Yeah, I agree. And Firebat is uh, one of the guys who's really great at rogue. He played a tons of games with rogue. Uh, one of his top tier decks, the Gfinity tournaments in the past, uh, showing really good skills and uh, knowing the, the the meta game. Maybe the maybe Rogue is one of those decks that is still viable, but you really have to nail all the matchups and you have to know everything, uh, what to play when, how to mulligan, and uh, mulligans are clutch as well versus those different different decks. Yeah. Um, also, like 
This isn't Control Warrior, which typically has a very good matchup against Oil Rogue. Rather, Green Patron Warrior has less of a good matchup because it has less ways to gain armor, or fewer ways to get gain armor. And also, like, the big Green Patron turns, they're dealt with rather easily from Rogue with, with big Blade Flurries. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and he already has the, the, those deadly poisons, so... He might be poised well to set up um, a good Flurry, but he needs to draw into that Flurry. Exactly. And now, pretty good turn from Firebat here. File Teacher into a spell is always going to be really good. Setting up those 1 1s. Even though generally you don't want 1 1s against Green Patient Warrior, this is perfectly fine at this point because it's still early into the game. Yeah, I certainly agree. But then there is a Death Spite. Oh, an Inner Rage. Do you actually kill the Violet Teacher now? There should be no need. Like, you can go with the Corsair, but I think it's it's totally alright to pass and to set up um, a Whirlwind effect next turn. And you're fine yeah. with taking 4 points of damage. If you want, you're even able to uh, spawn some Green Patrons in the next turn as well. Yeah. And even play the, the Corsair. It's really how much are you afraid of the of the Flurry. So next turn, possible Patron, Corsair, Inner Rage, Face, and it puts Farbat in a very difficult spot, unless yeah. there is a Flurry, and um, and also a, a Deadly Poison. So like, Colento has seen Deadly Poison, he, he might go for the big turn here. Yeah, we have seen Colento go somewhat all in in the past before, um, against Firebat actually in the Warrior versus Paladin game, and he goes for it once again, making the read that you probably don't have a uh, Deadly Poison plus Blade Flurry combo. All right, and he decides not to play the Corsair in case there is one. There is no need to overextend with Corsair. Corsair will be good later as well, and he has the Firework, so he still he still will be able to play it cheaper next turn. All right, so how does Firebat Firebat deal with this board now? Can he clear everything? Um, he has double eviscerates. He has a weapon attack. He doesn't have. He's missing one point of mana, I believe. But he can clear the important ones. Yeah, it's uh, pretty clean to clear, to be honest. He only leaves one patron up, and I think that's perfectly fine. Oh, he actually goes for the SA7, which is okay. also good. And then Colento doesn't have a wooden effect, but then he has um, fireworks. So it might seem that there was no blood flurry. Do you think it's safe to assume that there is no blood flurry? If there is no blood flurry, what do you do? Fireworks, think, double corsair, wet, uh, armor up, or yeah, I, th I think Colento can definitely make the read that there's no second blade flurry. Um, like that would have been such a good blade flurry turn in the previous turn. All right, there is a Fireworks, which is a great card by itself. You might actually go with one Corsair only. And uh, yeah, Frolling. Such a strong board. Firebot needs a, a Flurry right now, at this very moment. If he if he goes for the Sprint, he's dead. Well, Sprint, actually, he has to Sprint into Flurry and Preparation. That's one of the ways. If he goes for a Violet Teacher, the problem is with uh, Sprint into Preparation Blade Flurry is that you still leave like a huge Frothing Berserker up and you're probably going to be dead in the following turns to so, like Grom, the weapon hit, plus the Frothing. You have the box stop, so it's fine. Oh, that's true. But then if you if you don't go for that, can you still make a play here? Um, Violet Teacher... Violet Teacher into... Eviscerate? I don't know about that. That seems pretty sketchy against right. uh, a Grim Patron board. Preparation Flurry, boys. Can he do it? First of cards, work us up. No, he didn't get anything, so that will be it. But that was a, a good call. Like, he analyzed the situation, knew what to do, and a Preparation Flurry was actually doing it. So, uh, a good call by Firebat, but uh, Colento's going to take that game. Two to one, Colento versus Firebat. Oh man, that's, that's rogue. Yeah, I, I unfortunately... Wonder. Unfortunately, like the rogue isn't doing that well, and I think in tournaments recently, rogue has had like a subpar win rate, just like 
by the amount of decks that are just really strong against Rogue, it just seems like Rogue is kind of left in the dust sometimes. Like, even though there's no Control Warrior, Freeze Mages are becoming less popular. It just feels like the other decks have just gotten huge buffs that Rogue hasn't really gotten. Like, there's Rogue is running, like, some weaker cards, to be honest, like the Earthering Farseers that kind of aren't that great in a lot of matchups. Yeah, that's certainly true. Uh, so this game, we are not going to see the Rogue. We are going to see the Hunter. Uh, we can see this is more face than mid-range, but it can be still a mixture. Even though Firebat loves the face Hunter. And uh, no mid-range cards yet. No hybrid cards yet as well. For Colento, it's going to be Zoo. Zoo versus Hunter. Who is um, favored? Or is it Zoo, actually? This might also be the, the, just the Demon Lock. Yeah. Or Zoo with Void Terror. It definitely looks to be the Demon Lock. It's the deck that... Clento has brought to the to, first of all, it's the deck that Clento has played on stream to rank number one legend. Second of all, it's the deck that he brought to the King One Pro League Grand Finals that he won with. So this is uh, probably a great call to bring this deck once again because it's so tested, tried and true. Zeman Lock. I like it. All right. So um, for Hunter, uh, there is a couple of key cards. Um, possibly Farbad will be running Explosive Trap, which is great. And then Unleash the Hounds, obviously amazing. It's good to pair it with, uh, with the Knife Juggler. But then for um, for the Warlock and Defender Vargas, and um, a lot of the Vralo cards are great as well. Uh, having uh, Hitting a, a big Void Terror into something like a Void Caller would be great as well, getting the, that Doom Guard for free. There's a Leper Nimsh. Nice. I wonder what secret that is. I would Probably guess that's explosive, judging from this play. Explosive is maybe Snake Trap, but I would say it's explosive as well. I think, uh, like, because Hybrid Hunter is so popular these days, we would expect a lot of players to bring Hybrid Hunter. But I think uh, Firebat's the kind of guy who's like, Face Hunter's done so well for me in like a lot of tournaments, so he might suspect, or he might just bring Face Hunter to tournaments. Because it actually, Face Hunter probably has a good matchup against uh, the Hybrid Hunter as well. Yeah, I agree. This is something you mentioned before, and uh, that's a good call as well. Just uh, getting those people off guard with uh, just a simple Face Hunter that's um, easy to play but hard to master. And Farbad is one of the guys who definitely mastered Face Hunter. All right, so here just uh, facing the 6 3. It will be possible to, to deal with it. But then you want to maximize damage somehow. Yeah, this Leopardome now threatens the 6-3. And even adding in uh, an Abusive Sergeant as well. I think maybe... Oh, can... look at that. Oh, that's pretty sick. I think, uh, actually, maybe... Let's go for the Volwalker. Sort of a sequencing error. I think you would rather get the buff on the 2-1, for instance. It's just like, it spreads like the effects around, so like a science would be less effective on the Leopardo. But I don't think it's going to make a difference at all, to be honest. Yeah, not much difference there. The, the Knife Juggler misses, so it's kind of a strange situation for Clanto at this point. Yeah, um, just hitting any of those minions would be great. Uh, hitting Leopardo would be amazing, because then he can just attack into 2-1. Uh, right now it's like, if you attack into 2-1, it's still fine, I believe. But then Unleash the Hounds is going to be tough. But I like getting the value here. It's not like Kalento has to be racing Face Hunter. It's more about that Face Hunter will have to attack into the 6 1 at some point. What a great draw from Firebat. Just filling out his curve perfectly. Yeah. He's going to be able to clear the board as well. And he's going to get initiative. But he is running out of cards. And Kalento is still at 26. Firebat has to clear here. Too many dangerous minions. It's like you can't leave a 6 1 or a 3 2 on board. Okay, so getting some damage there. Still having uh, kill command at Wolf Rider. There is Defender of Vargas though, so now Implosion, if it hits for 4, that's a huge turn. There's Explosive Chop though. Oh, there's oh, even quick shot. shot. Right now, I believe Firebot just has to close his eyes and go for face. And uh, he did well trading a couple of uh, previous turns, but this is the moment where you just go for it. 
On the other hand, Colento has to trade. Yeah, pretty good trades, I would say. Clearing up his opponent's entire board, then setting off the trap as well. It leaves him at 13 HP, but he can like start afresh. Yeah, set up a taunt as well, so protect himself from uh, Wolf Riders, Arcing Golems, um, a bow. Oh my god, perfect draw here for Fire. Not Bat. from Iron Beak. It's a beast, that's probably the most important well. thing. Not only that, it gets rid of the uh, taunt. So now, like, Wolf Riders or Arcing Golems are great draws for Fire Bat. Yeah, the Fire Bat is going to deal 5 damage next turn, just from the hero power and quick shot, and basically draw 2 cards. Colento has to kill the Iron Beak to survive. And is it possible for Firebat to not draw into damage cards? That's no, not it. Not at all. He had two draws, <laughs> so it's definitely like 100% impossible. Close to 100% impossible. Oh, wow. Look, look at that, even a Wolf Rider. And, uh, and the Face Hunter, you can't even call it the top deck. So Firebat is going to take game number four, tie the series versus Colento. As expected and as hoped, we have a tie. Game number five, Monk. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? Yeah, definitely a very tense situation here. Um, so what are the, actually like the decks remaining for both players? It's going to be Paladin, Zoo. Paladin won. There is a Rogue for Firebat. It's a Rogue. And versus Zoo. Versus, versus Zoo. The, the Demon Zoo, I'd say. Demon Zoo. Z yeah. Demon Lock. It, it can certainly go in either player's uh, direction. I think it'll be largely based on if Firebat Larry. gets the coin. And of course, yeah, flurries. The coin is gotten for Firebat, so that's step one. All right, here's the coin. Doesn't have an SA7, but there is a deadly poison. And a flurry is such a key card, it's just crazy. Like, even not having a flurry is stopping your opponent from overextending the board. Some Sometimes while pr pl playing around ro uh, against Rogue, you just have to take the risk that there is no flurry and go for overextension because that's the only way you're, gonna, you're going to win. Wow, SA7. Okay, uh, there is the Ruben Egg though, might uh, might be useful, uh, Defender of Argus as well. So, not terrible from Colento, uh, also curving into Sylvanas and Dr. Boom will be great, but he still needs something on turn 5, uh, preferably not a Doomguard. Yeah, so even though Colento, from Colento's perspective, he might see, okay, this is kind of a slow start for me, it's actually good for him. Because yeah. if he had like Flame Imp into Knife Juggler, for instance, he would have gotten wrecked by Deadly Poison and an SI Agent. I just looked at the player's nicknames and I started wondering if uh, if they would change and then we'll have Colbat versus Fire Fa Fa Firento. Would it be easier to cast or not? Like the, the Pokemon Gobbat? <laughs> kind of. Zubat? Zubat, the most annoying creature in the entire game. Yep. Zubatman, there is something like that as well. All right, though. Um, what do you do being Firebat? You are, as you said, like, Colento is not doing much pressure, but those minions are um, sticky, and they do produce some other minions. So how do you... Like, whatever you play, if there is, let's say, Defender Vargas, you can get a 4-4 outside of it. Like, if you want to play SA7 here... Defender of Argus is kind of devastating, right? You still don't have the Flurry. Mm. You do have Fun of Knives, but it's not doing much. A very weird spot, like even though there's only one power on board, maybe just not doing anything is the play. And uh, Farbite goes for it, he just plays Deadly Poison. Again, he needs the Flurry. Oh, Sap, that's sap. actually nice. Yeah, Sap is a very nice one. He can Sap either of those uh, defended up creatures. Yeah, probably the Nurban Egg, because now he can Sap and then hit the Haunted Creeper with his weapon, then coin out the Phantom Knives for almost a four bold clear. Yeah, that's definitely very powerful. For Colento, he was able to get that Void Caller. Uh, not great on turn 5 unless he picks up a demon. Uh, if he would get a Doomguard or Morganis, it will be great. But uh, now it's um, swinging into Firebats. Oh, that's interesting, actually going for a SI agent play. 
I guess it trades well with everything on board. Oh wow, Not look like... at that. He actually gets the Doom Guard. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty huge one. And Void Caller is so annoying, like, especially after sub being used. You just have to ignore it. Wow, Torison. This game is still uh, anybody's oh, game. Abuse of Sergeant is actually a huge draw as well. Because he can summon a free Doom Guard in this turn. Yeah, but the question and he can really go for is the like, exactly like, like do you, like this is almost certainly the best play. Yeah, much better and than Sylvanas. Sylvanas might just get sapped again, for instance. And yeah. like I, and like even though Firebat, he had a pretty good start. Um, wow, with, both like, nice to the face as well. Yeah, pretty good. Like he had a pretty good start, but like how he's gonna deal with this board? He basically yeah, needs like a even... huge Tinker's Oil. He needed Blade Flurry on this turn. There's even the Rubin Egg. Like, if he deals with Doomguard, and uh, like Knife Juggler and a 2 1, it's not that hard to deal with, but there is that Nerubian Egg just standing there, just waiting for damage. If he would get uh, Flurry, with Flurry, he clears everything and leaves the 4 4, right? No, he doesn't, because then there is like plus 3 attack on the. Oh no, he does with Eviscerate, okay. So what, what's the line of play here? Just uh, play minions to try to come back? Uh, I don't know. There's just too much damage on the board at this moment. And, you know, your opponent, as the mid-range Demon Zoo player, he's going to run Power of Overwhelmings in his uh, deck as well. So uh, pretty much any time he's aboard and he has Power of Overwhelming, that's, you're going to be threatened with uh, lethal at this point. Firebat's like thinking so hard about this because this definitely seems like an almost impossible situation for him. I don't know, Kev. I don't know what Firebat is going to do here, uh, especially with Dr. Boom just waiting, Colento curving out that next turn. Okay, so he's, he's at least trying to limit the damage. course, Dr. Boom is going to be played on turn 7, and that's going to be even more trouble for Firebat, because as typically as a rogue, you have very few ways to deal with Dr. Boom, and as a rogue in like this type of position, you have even fewer ways. Okay, so if he gets that flurry next, next turn, does it change anything? Uh, he will be able to buff the weapon to 6. Well, this is not flurry, so... He needs to Azure Drake into Flurry here. It's pretty much that, or like Fan into Flurry might be an option. He still might be dead with the bombs getting the 4-4 four, four on board and um, Dr. Boom attacking for 7. This is tough. Uh, if he goes for Fan of Knives, is there anything? Yeah, he, he needs to get Flurry. I like this play, actually. He's going uh, to draw two cards if Bomb hits Talnos. Uh, oh, it's not Flurry, unfortunately. Like he with this uh, type of play, oh preparation is not good either. But but with this play, he can possibly draw a card and clear the Nubian spider that would come out if he got the flurry. But unfortunately, that's not it. And Kalento will put another uh, point on the board for the HCC team. Oh man, eliminating the world champion from the tournament. But uh, those flurries, man, like he never got them. He never got them. Uh, they, they were key cards, and uh, they changed them, most of the anti agro match like agro matchups. When you play rogue, you get that flurry, you're able to to clear the board. But he he drew many cards, never got those uh, flurries. But still, really well played by Firebat. I'm yeah. uh, especially amazed by the paladin build and uh, the paladin play. Like comeback from two life, solemn vigil, guardians. Come on, it's like we never we haven't seen that. Like we never seen that actually. Yep. So. Uh, even though Firebat is now out of the tournament, I think he still showed kind of his best self, bringing a deck that he really loves in the form of uh, Rogue, and just bringing a new deck in form in the form of Solemn Vigil Paladin. So, congrats to Firebat for showing us some entertaining games, but also congrats to Kalento for moving forward. Oh yeah, definitely. Kalento is going to face Forsen tomorrow. Um, then we already have one part of the bracket done: of Forsen versus Kalento, Ties versus Hyped. Uh, for today, we still have a lot of matches for you, three matches for you, actually. We have Tight and Zalai coming up next, I believe. So Cloud9 versus Archon again. Then we have Sho versus RDU. Sho, the only remaining uh, player from Team Liquid versus RDU from Nihilum. And then Trump, uh, the owner of the channel, 
versus Chucky, a TSM Trump versus uh, is Chucky on it? He is on Dignitas, Team Dignitas Chucky. Oh yeah, man, this is this will be exciting. So uh, for now, uh, we are going to go on a short break, but after that, don't go anywhere. We're going to get back with Ties of Time versus I, I believe. Stay tuned.